Hello, in this video we're going to look at some of the probability problems that one can expect to see in the kangaroo math contest for grades 11 and 12. So let's jump right in. For question one, we're told that three points are selected at random from the following grid that you should see on the right side of the screen. What is the probability that they are collinear? So remember that three points being collinear means they lie on the same straight line. The probability that any three randomly chosen points are collinear is just the total number of ways to choose three points that are collinear divided by the total number of ways to choose three points in general out of the 12. So usually computing the total number is easier, and I like to start with that when working on these sorts of problems. So for the total number, we're choosing three points out of a possible 12 and it doesn't matter which order we choose them in, uh, any different order of choosing three points produces the same three points. Uh, so we can compute this as 12 choose three. So remember uh, that this is the quantity 12 factorial divided by three factorial and 12 minus three factorial. So in other words, this is 12 factorial divided by three factorial and nine factorial. And once you simplify this, uh, it should just work out to 220. To make our lives a little bit easier, let's draw in all the straight lines that appear on this grid. It's tempting to conclude that the total number of collinear collections of three points is just the number of lines. And the, this naive estimate is good enough for those vertical lines, which all consist of only three points, uh, as well as the diagonal lines. Uh, so there's uh, four of those vertical lines and four of those diagonal lines. Uh, but the problem is, if we look at any one of the horizontal lines, we see that they're comprised of four different points. So choosing any three points out of this total four uh, all produce the same straight line. So four choose three works out to uh, just be four, and there's three of these horizontal lines, so we actually have to add three multiplied by four to our total count. Uh, so in other words, the total number of ways to choose three points such that they are collinear ends up being five times four, which is 20, and therefore the probability we're looking for is 20 divided by 220, and this simply works out to one over 11, and thus our answer is B. So for question two, we're told that Samantha and her three sisters went to the theater. Uh, their tickets were all in a row with four seats. Uh, Samantha and two of her sisters arrived earlier and each took a seat at random on any of the four seats. What is the probability that Samantha had to move to another seat when their younger sister Mary sh arrived if Mary insisted that she take her assigned seat and after so did any of the sisters that had to stand up? Again, like the last problem, I think it's easier to compute the total number of cases first. So let's do that. So if we think about it, there are four seats and three sisters are arriving early. Uh, so Sam could take any one of these seats. Uh, so there's four possible places where Sam could go. Uh, that leaves a possibility for uh, three places where Anna could go because one of those seats is then occupied by Sam. And that leaves a possibility of two seats of where Betty could go. Uh, and then of course, that's all the decisions to be made at the beginning. So the total here is four times three times two, which is 24. So now we wanna count the total number of cases in which Samantha will have to move. So I'm gonna make this little table here, A for Anna, B for Betty, M for Mary, and S for Sam, representing their seats uh, in no particular order. And on the right, I'm gonna write who takes those seats. Well, certainly if nobody takes Mary's seat, then no one's gonna have to move and definitely Sam won't have to move. So uh, we're not gonna consider that case. Uh, the first case to consider then is, well, if Sam takes Mary's seat, then definitely Sam will have to move when Mary shows up. So how many ways can this occur? Well, there's three other seats. So uh, if we're figuring out where the other sisters sit, there's uh, three possibilities for where Anna can sit. 
So that only leaves two possibilities for where Betty can sit, and that gives us a total of six possibilities. Okay, so what if instead of Sam taking Mary's seat, what if Anna were to take Mary's seat? Again, we're interested in the cases where Sam moves. So certainly, Sam would have to move if Sam had taken Anna's seat, because when Mary shows up, that makes Anna have to move, and that would make Sam have to move as well. So how many of these cases are there? Well, there's just two possible seats left uh, where Betty could sit. So still thinking about the case when Anna takes Mary's seat, uh, what if Sam didn't take Anna's seat? Is there a way that Sam still moves? Uh, well, we know that if Sam took her own seat, she wouldn't have to move. Uh, but what about if she took Betty's seat? Well, the only way she could move is if Betty had to move. And Betty would have to move if Betty was in Anna's seat. But in this case, we've determined completely where the three sisters who arrived first are sitting. Uh, so there's no choices to be made. There's only one case where this happens. Now we could also go ahead and look at the case when Betty takes Mary's seat. But the reasoning is actually identical to when looking at the case that Anna takes Sam's seat. That is, we're going to find uh, two and one cases, that is a total of three cases. So altogether, there are six cases where Sam has to move taking Mary's seat, plus three cases where Sam has to move when Anna takes Mary's seat, and three cases where Sam has to move when Betty takes Mary's seat. Divided by the total number of cases, uh, this is just 12 over 24, or the probability is one half. So our answer is B for this question. For question three, we're told a standard die is thrown three times, given that the number of dots obtained on the third attempt equals the sum of the numbers obtained on the two previous attempts, find the probability that the two dots appeared at least once. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to try and determine what the total number of possibilities are first. So I'm going to let x denote the value of the die that gets rolled first, y is going to be the value of the second roll of the die, and we want to look at the cases when the sum of the first and second toss equals the third toss, which I will call z. Now since these are all numbers on a die, we know that x, y, and z are only numbers between 1 and 6. So we really only want to consider the case when uh, x plus y, being z, is less than or equal to 6. Since we know that y is at least 1, this means that for any choice of x, x plus y is going to be at least x plus 1, and it's going to be at most 6. So subtracting x from everywhere, we get that y is between 1 and 6 minus x uh, for any possible choice of x. So we just need to add up all these cases for each choice of x. There's going to be uh, 6 minus x choices for y. So how many choices is that? Well, that's 6 minus x when x is 1, plus 6 minus x when x is 2, plus 6 minus x, and we go all the way, the biggest that x can be is 6. Well, 6 minus 1 is 5, plus 6 minus 2 is 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, plus 0, gives us a total of 15 cases. Now we want to count the number of ways that the number 2 appears on a die at least once. We know that z can be 2, but since x and y are both equal to 1, this means that x plus y is at least 1 plus 1, so the smallest this can be is 2, and so z will only uh, be 2 in this one case when x and y are both 1, uh, otherwise one of these has to be a bit larger and their sum will be a bit larger than 2. So if z is not equal to 1, then our 1 occurrence of the 2 has to appear either in x or y. 
So let's say that x is equal to 2. Well, x plus y is 2 plus y in this case. And we know that y is at least 1, so this is at least 2 plus 1, which is 3, and at most 6. Subtracting the 2 from everything tells us that y is between 1 and 4, and of course there is exactly 4 choices of y in this case. Lastly, if z is not equal to 2 and x is not equal to 2, well then it has to be the case that the y is equal to 2. Much like the last case, we find that x plus 2 uh, has to be at least 1 plus 2, and we know it has to be at most 6. And subtracting 2 from everything, we find that x is between 1 and 4. But here, we have to be careful. We don't actually have all four possibilities because we're working in the case when x can't be 2, and 2 is between 1 and 4. So here we only get three possibilities. So putting everything together, there's one possibility when z is equal to 2, there are four possibilities when z is not equal to 2 and x is equal to 2, and there are three possibilities when neither z nor x are equal to 2. Divided by our total of 15, uh, this works out to be a probability of 8 out of 15, and therefore our answer is D. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, uh, you can check out mathkangaroo.ca or info at mathkangaroocanada.com.